let's walk through the six steps of hypothesis testing. Step number one is to identify your null and your alternative hypotheses. The null hypothesis, or H sub zero, will always have the equality in its sign. So that will always be the one that's equal to, or greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. That will always be your null hypothesis. Your alternative is the opposite of the null. So not equal to, or just less than or greater than. Then step number two is to set a value for the significance level. This is just going to be your alpha, and typically your alpha will be just given to you in the problem. Your third step is to determine the appropriate critical value. Now the critical value, you care about your alpha and your tail. So if it's a one-tailed test, we will use in Excel equals norm.s.inv of alpha, and if it's a right-tailed test, your critical value will be positive. If it's a left-tailed test, your critical value will be negative. Now, if it's a two-tailed test, we have to do alpha divided by two, because what we're doing is we're splitting up that alpha into each of our two tails. So we're going to have a little bit on the left side and a little bit on the right side of our bell curve. And with a two-tailed test, you will have both the positive and the negative values for your critical value. Once we have our critical value, then we can calculate our test statistic. This is calculating a z-score. And so we can see our z-score formula here, where we do x bar minus mu of h sub zero, so that's your sample mean, minus the mean from your null hypothesis, divided by your standard error. So population standard deviation over the square root of your sample size. And that's going to kick back a z-score. And that z-score is your test statistic. Step five is to compare your test statistic and your critical value. So this is where we can draw that bell curve. And we can set our rejection region by using our critical value. And if our test statistic falls within that rejection region, that's how we would know if we need to reject our null hypothesis. Now also in step five, instead of comparing your test statistic and your critical value, you could compare your p-value to your alpha. And we have this rule here, where if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. Now, whether you compare your critical value and test statistic, like we did first, or you compare your p-value to your alpha, you're going to end up with the same conclusion. And that's when we get to step six here when we need to state our conclusion. Now, we have two choices here. We can either reject the null or not reject the null. But what's also important is explain what that means. Let's say you're doing this in your, in your career and you go to your manager and you said, hey, I just ran a hypothesis test. We need to reject the null hypothesis. That's not what your manager is looking for. Your manager is looking for an explanation as to what needs to happen next. So based off of what your hypotheses are, based off of what the situation is, you also need to explain what rejecting the null hypothesis means as the next course of action or means as to what occurred.